So I wanted to make a video on how to fix the heat soak in your Jeep Cherokee or Comanche because I have seen a thousand YouTube videos and a thousand forum posts on this and none of them actually explain how to fix this and what the root cause of this is. So I wanted to go in and show you exactly how I fixed it permanently on my Jeep Comanche. So basically what heat soak is, and I'm sure you already know exactly what it is because you're watching this video, is when fuel gets so hot inside of this fuel rail, it starts to actually boil. And a lot of the times this will happen is because you have a bad check valve in your fuel pump, which is inside of the tank. Um, but when you've got a little extra heat added, which I do because of this guy right here, that doesn't even help. I've got a brand new fuel pump. I put a brand new fuel pressure regulator in it and it still didn't seem to help whatsoever. So here's the solution I came up with and I actually can't take all of the credit. My tuner, Thomas Beyer, and I'll link his channel below actually because he's the one who came up with this idea. I'm just the one who did it. But basically the idea was, so basically the first thing you gotta get is this fuel rail from eBay. I will also link this below. Not only does it look way better than the factory one, it also performs way better and it helps with heat soak even without doing these modifications right here. So I definitely recommend getting this for your Jeep, especially if you just want to spice up the looks of your engine bay. So here's the ugly old one and here's the pretty new one. So you can see how much better this one looks. And you may be saying, oh, you've got these heat sleeves on here. That's what's fixing it. No, it is not what's fixing it. I just have these on here to protect my injectors because it gets extremely hot right here. As you can see, there's four different spots on the Jeep right here where the exhaust is extremely close to everything, pretty much. Um, so this, all these exhaust parts right here, there's one right here, one right here, one right there, one right there, and one at the back. So there's actually five, I was mistaken. Um, but there's all holes in the intake, basically, to where that exhaust has like a direct heat path to your uh, fuel rail. So... This is actually an 86 Comanche. I four liter swapped it and then I swapped it out for a 4.6 liter and then I turbocharged that. So the 4.6 actually makes quite a bit more heat than the 4.0 does. So the fix is to run this fuel rail. This is an eight ORB fitting. And what I did back here was I ran a 90 degree eight ORB. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, yeah, you can. I ran a 90 degree 8 ORB to a 6 AN fuel line, and that is my feed line, and it's coming in through the back. And then this is my return line right here. So it's just the quick disconnect to a 6 AN back to the 8 ORB, and this is my fuel pressure regulator right here. So <clears throat> basically how this solves the heat soak is, since the normal 96 has the fuel pressure regulator that's in the tank, basically any extra fuel pressure is going Basically, it's a little loop inside of the tank. Once it hits that regulator, it just goes directly back into the tank. So all of the extra pressure ends up in the fuel rail from right here. So once it starts heating up and you cycle the key, you cycle the key, you cycle the key, you cycle the key, that's not doing anything at all because all of that extra fuel pressure is just going straight back into the tank, straight back into the tank. So all that heated fuel is still up in here and you end up getting stuck in the parking lot waiting for 20 minutes just for it to cool off. So... You've got the feed line right here, then you've got your return line right here, and this returns back to the tank. And there isn't actually a return line into the tank, so I had to make one, and I'll go ahead and show you how I did that now. And you don't have to go all crazy and all out like I did here and run steel braided lines. I just ran steel braided PTFE tubes because they're rated way better for heat. And as you can see, this one's pretty close to the exhaust there. And everything in this whole entire area is pretty close to the exhaust because the exhaust and intake are on the exact same side. So basically how this fixes the heat soak problem is with that fuel pressure regulator up front, when the fuel pump gets primed when you first turn that key all of the hot fuel that's been heat soaked comes back in through this line goes up here back into the top of the tank up there and then cold fuel from the feed line right here goes and fills that rail and instantly cools off the injectors and the fuel rail because water transfers heat super super well so it almost instantly gets rid of your heat soak and i can actually give you guys a test here in a minute i'm going to go take it for a drive where it would normally be heat soaked and then show you exactly how it just fires right back up. And I'll leave a link to all the parts you need. I believe this was the most expensive part. This was around a hundred bucks. This fuel pressure regulator was around 40. And then all the lines I believe were also around 40 to $50. So it's around a $200 fix, but 
it's an end-all be-all fix because I've seen some other fixes where people like have a fan timer that turns on one of the fans right here for like three minutes. I don't know. To me, that just seemed like a good way to kill your battery, and it just didn't seem like a permanent fix. It seemed to be more of like a band-aid to the problem. So I figured this was definitely a better way to do it. If I could redo it, I would have, I don't know how to weld aluminum. I don't know how to take weld at all, but if I did, I would have plugged off this completely and done another 90 degree ORB fitting and had it come out of here. I just think it would have looked better. And, and this is a way bigger hole, this ORB fitting right here. So it'd be able to flow more fuel out. So I'll go ahead and prime it for you and show you what it does. Then we can go for a drive and I will show you. So I actually have my fuel pressure set at 60 PSI for my tune. Uh, I, actually only have it, I actually only have it set that high because this pressure regulator can't go any lower than that. So 60 PSI it is. Um, so let's go ahead and drive it, get it hot, and then see what happens. And I'll go ahead and do a quick third gear pull just because everybody always asks me to do it in this and I don't have many videos of this turbo Jeep running. So we'll go after it here in one second. Okay, so now it is nice and hot. I'm at 190 right now, which is actually hot for mine. Um, I have an electric fan set up on there to where it runs a lot cooler than normal and it's tuned for that. You don't wanna actually do that unless you have a custom tune. Um, and I'll go ahead and shut it off and we'll let it sit for three minutes and we'll see what happens with the heat soak. All right, so it's been about three minutes. Let's go ahead and start it and see what happens. I already know what's gonna happen, but just to prove it to you guys. Ugh. Starts right up, no issues whatsoever. So yep, that is how you fix heat soak on any of your Jeep Cherokee or Comanche. It does take a little bit of work, but it's 100% worth it, especially if you just really like driving it or it's your daily driver, so. I hope you liked the video and I will see you guys next time. Peace.